Welcome back to Oshisleben for round 16 of the European Touring Car Championship 2003. And uh, after the domination of the race from pole position by Jürgen Müller in round 15, the championship leader extends his advantage to 10 points over his closest rivals. It's a tie between Andy Prio and Gabriele Tarkini for runner-up spot, second place in the points at the moment. Well, don't forget, after this 16th race, four more to go. Two at Estoril, two at Monza, before the title is decided. And it could still be, well, anybody's, apart from maybe the man who'll start in front. For First time this season that you've scored some points. Does this mean really that Seat is progressing? Uh, we just, we hope to have a good uh, race again. The car is very good balanced and I'm really looking forward for it. We just have to pass the first corner. This is the most difficult here, but um, we see. I hope it's going good. Thank you. Well, let's hope so too, because the yellow and silver cars need a little bit more luck and a bit more competitiveness at car. Takini and Jörg, head of Dirk. Row three, and where is Tom Coronel off to? Tom Coronel from second on the grid. So a lap with Frank Diefenbacher, and uh, that was just before qualifying. Diefenbacher there, the yellow Seat, those BMWs for row three to really make a good start. Plus Jörg Muller and Dirk Muller from row four and five respectively. Away they go then. Giovinardi gets a little bit of tyre smoke. Here comes Garcia, he's got past the Seat, he's got past Tarkini. So too is Prio, Prio's got the inside line, he goes into second place. So it's Giovinardi, Prio, and there's Diefenbacher kicking up the dirt. Garcia in third, Tarkini in fourth. There's Ricard Rydell around the outside of, is it Engstrom? Yes, it would be, I think. There is Garcia in third. Behind him is the fifth place, Seat. This is in sixth position then, looking forward from Jörg Müller. I think it may well be. Looking back from Tarkini. And let's have a check. Yeah, I think that is Jörg Müller in sixth position. So from eighth on the grid. And see that rear wheel classic front wheel drive car there. Rear wheel hopping clear of the deck. So Giovinardi, Prio, Garcia, Tarkin, uh, Colciago, I beg your pardon, fourth. And then Diefenbacher, who's how did that one happen? I was getting myself all in a two and eight. That is Jörg Müller. Then Tarkini number four, then Hene as they go across the line. So it wasn't uh, Jörg Müller. I'm sorry, those of you that were yelling at the screen telling me that at the time. There is Diefenbacher piling the pressure on Colciago. BMW is one, two, three. Alpha four, say. Or was it from Tarkini's car? Well, hard to tell. Uh, Giovinardi Prio, Garcia, Colciago, Diefenbacher, Jörg, Gabrielli, and then Hori Hene in eighth place. So Dirk Muller. A little further back. And then Rydell. And here comes Colciago, wheel to wheel with Diefenbacher. And Frank holds on, German driver with his dander well and truly up here. Not going to give away a single point if he can help it to anybody, not man nor beast. Diefenbacher strong in defense here. Car for him as it was last time out Hene is the man who's got a slightly revised version of their beam axle the uh, fully reversed revised version should hopefully be on both cars for Estoril it's Giovinardi that leads then Prio in second Garcia in third and Colciago now fourth and fifth not fifth and fourth Diefenbacher got alongside and around and then defended strongly to stop Colciago getting back in front let's have a look here A little bit of contact there for the number nine car. Just a little tap into Hori Kane. Winner as a driver. Now Diefenbacher is right with Garcia now. In the Spanish set Toledo, about to try and dust up the Spanish BMW. With him has come Colciago. Tarkini is closing in as well. 1.5 set, try and get a good run down into the Bilstein S's. Over far right of the track, he's letting Prio go, but he's trying to do it in as gentlemanly a manner as possible. Prio 
goes by him into the lead. And Giovinardi in trouble. Garcia goes through as well. And Diefenbach again. Come on, get out the way. I've got a race to win here. Give the boy three points and suddenly he thinks he's the race winner in... <laughs> And uh, through two goes Colciago. Tarkini can't get by on either side there of Giovinardi. And Gio is not long for this race. If he's giving away positions like that, it's not for uh, the love of it. Colciago still trying to get by. And it's Dirk getting ahead of Jörg. Couldn't quite see what happened there. Behind Tarkini, but ahead of Heisman and Colciago behind Heisman as well. So Colciago is sliding down the order. Still holding off Tarkini. Jörg Muller, though, behind him as well, the championship points leader. <laughs> Everything crossed and then some on the Seat pit wall. I think they too, sensing not only can this boy get his first points of the year, he can get Seat's first podium finish. And well, no, it's not beyond the bounds. Eight laps completed. So. I mean, scoring has uh, dropped another lap behind again. Sorry about that. Garcia Diefenbach, as he will get uh, 10 8, 6, four points for fourth place. And Frank Diefenbacher and the Seat team. There's Jaime Pooch, the uh, slightly balding man with a headset around his neck, congratulating his mechanics for a job well done. Diefenbacher, what a red letter day for the Seat driver today. And uh, Jaime Pooch's phone is going already. Bravissimo, or whatever the congratulations is in Spanish. I'm sorry, I don't understand what it is. I don't know what it is. Uh, Raime Puich, a great result for Seat Sport, sixth in the first race, and now third, first podium of Seat in ETCC. How do you feel? Oh, we feel fantastic. I mean, you can imagine. All the team is, is happy. We needed that, you know, always on the races. The first year was to learn. We are learning. Uh, we didn't thought we learned so, so easy or so fast that it could be, be podium, but obviously we are very, very happy. Diefenbacher was also fantastic, German for his home race. Yes, I think that he has a extra motivation, completely full, uh, and obviously he has he has profit everything. You know? He has perfect race, he has done a good race, Jordi also. I mean, he was testing some things, so for the future, so both drivers, Jordi and Frank, has done a great race. And what can you expect for the next two races? Just go ahead. I mean, they are the other concurrents also, and go ahead and try to be the, the best every time, but slowly, slowly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, Jaime Pierce, yes, <laughs> that's going to be a consistent uh, chorus around him for the next hour or two, isn't it? Jaime Pooch with the phone going.